Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Laurent Vigoroux, and the story I'm presenting to you addresses to the influence of grief types, especially the planning or death, on the biomedical care on action during pull-ups. Uh, this study was conducted in the Institute of Human Sciences at Marseille, France. And as everyone knows, the rock climbing performance is the result of a huge number of different factors, such as the technical skills, the psychological factors, the cognitive and sensory motor skills, and of course the physiological probabilities. Among these physio physiological probabilities, the capacity to exert a high intensity of fingertip force on small holes and the capacity to limit the forearm muscle fatigue are crucial. The arms are also very important, especially the capacity to pull up with the arms or to lock the joint arms, the arm joints at a given angle. And these two parameters are previously studied in the literature. Um, Previously studied in the literature, and for example, in finger force capacities, there are numerous studies and um, using various parameters that show that the climbers are able to generate more force at the fingertips uh, than non climbers. And our team in Marseille uh, showed that these higher fingertip force capacities are the result of the improvement of the only finger flexor muscles, while the other muscle groups, such as the wrist, flex, wrist muscles or the finger extensors, remain similar between climbers and non climbers. Of course, the climbing or death uh, strongly influences the finger force capacities. Anka, in uh, 2012, experimented this effect and modeled this relationship using polynomial regression. And this relationship um, link the finger force capacity of the climbers to the size of the whole Concerning the capacities of the arms, it is well recognized that climbers perform more poorer than non-climbers. And the two pictures on the right uh, present the core snap test, uh, which has been used by several authors to evaluate the arm power of the climbers. And these, author, these authors show that the climbers develop more power than the races. So, we have a quite good knowledge of the finger capacities and the arm capacities, but the interaction between the grip capacities and the arm movements still are still not investigated. We can hypothesize, for example, that a movement of your arms influences the finger force intensity or the level of forearm muscle fatigue. And in turn, we can hypothesize that the finger force capacities or the, the, the muscle fatigue can influence the movement of the arm and their capacities. So, these study um, have uh, for objectives to investigate this interaction by studying a standardized movement, the pull-ups. The pull-ups were chosen as, as um, for example, of a sim simple climbing arm movement. So to do this experiment, 10 expert climbers were asked to perform a maximum number of pull-ups. And they were required to perform each pull-up as fast as possible and as strongly as possible <coughs> within exhaustion. And six series of pull-ups were performed by the climbers. Four series were performed on small climbing poles with various depth 
from a range from 10 millimeters to 22 millimeters, but with a similar shape. One series was performed on a large pool, and one series was performed with a gym bar. Some precautions were took to limit the effect of fatigue <coughs> and uh, problematic and lead to a learning effect. Four sensors were uh, used to measure the force applied by the climbers on the arm bar. These four sensors were developed at uh, Ex Marseille University uh, for the Smart Block project, and I brought here uh, two prototypes of uh, this kind of uh, four sensors. And uh, I can show you these prototypes at uh, the poster session or at the coffee break if you're interested. Here you can see a typical recording of the frost during the entire during one series of pull-ups. Uh, here the subject is just hanging the hook on the board and yes, he performed the pull-ups until exhaustion. The electromyography of four muscles were recorded synchronously. The bicep brachii, the triceps brachii, the finger flexors, and the finger extensors. And here you can see typical recordings of the finger flexors, EMG. And here the biceps brachii, the EMG biceps brachii. The first data were featured and three variables were computed for each series of First, the maximal force applied by the climbers <coughs> in the series. The maximal power developed by the climber during the series. The power is the multiplication of the force and the velocity of the climber. And the sub-mechanical work were computed during the entire series of curves. The sub-mechanical work represents the energy expanded by the climber during the, the, the series of groups. Concerning the EMG data, they, they were featured and three variables were also computed. The mean activation of the reset breaking muscle, which was computed at, as an index of the elbow flexor's involvement in the series. The evolution of the mean power frequency of EMG signals of the finger flexors, which has been computed as an index of the forearm muscle fatigue developed uh, during the, the theory, and the co contraction index of finger muscles. The co contraction is the ratio between extensors and flexors uh, EMG signal, and this is an index of. Uh, finger muscle coordination to grip the different holes. So, let's see the results. First, concerning the maximum applied force during pull-ups. We showed a significant effect of the grip types, but we show no difference between uh, large hole and gym bar. Concerning the small climbing holes, we observed a decrease of the maximal applied force during the series according to the decrease of the whole depth. It is important to note that the maximal applied force during the pull-ups were close to the maximal fingertip force capacities of the climbers on the same holes. These forces represented around an average 92% of the maximal fingertip force capacities. So, this result is in accordance with the study of Amica. And this decrease is probably due to the decreasing figure force capacities observed with the whole day. Concerning the maximal power, we also show um, a significant effect of the grip types, but again, no difference between large hold and gym bar. The climbers develops the same power whatever the, these two conditions. For the small climbing holes, we observed a large decrease of the maximal power 
and this decrease was larger than the one observed for the maximal upright force. So this could be explained first by the decreased finger force capacities, as I said before, and also a decreased velocity of the climbers. So the climbers perform the press more slowly with the whole depth. Concerning the sun mechanical work, which represents the energy expended during the, the exercise, we again show a significant effect of grip types and again no difference between large holes and big For the for the small climbing holes, we also show a strong a decrease, but this decrease was stronger than the one observed for the power and the one observed for the maximum applied force. Additionally, to the two first explanations, the decreasing finger force capacities according to the whole depth and the decreasing velocity of the, the pull-ups, we can uh, consider that there is here in this decrease a significant um, an effect of the finger muscle flexibility. If we look at the mean power frequency of finger flexor EMG, which is an index of <coughs> finger flexor fatigue, we can see that there is a strong decrease of this index, which indicates that uh, the climbers um, develop more muscle fatigue with small holes uh, compared to a larger hole. Two other results. Uh, but I know EMG are important. The first is the activation of Bristet's working. And it is important to note that this EMG index showed a, a similar decrease according to the old depth and the grip types, which uh, confirms that there is a decreasing involvement of the elbow flexors according to the old depth. And the last result concerns the EMG co-contraction index of the finger muscles. Even if the performance of pull-ups were similar between the large hole and the gym bar, as we saw so just before, and the EMG co-contraction index were significantly different between large hole and gym bar. And this co-contraction index was higher with the large hole than with the gym bar. This means that we use different grip muscle coordination according to the, um, the two uh, conditions, even if the performances are similar. And we can hypothesize that this increasing in contraction index is uh, a way to increase the risk stiffness to better control the body swing and the body movement with the hold compared to uh, with the gym bar. So, to summarize these results, from the arm's point of view, if I perform arm movement or pull-ups with small holes, I observe a decrease in maximal power, a decrease in expanded mechanical energy, and a decrease and a decrease in involvement of elbow flexors. So, if you want to try, for example, um, your arms. Um, by performing pull-ups on small holds, it's not a good idea because your arms are not involved at their maximum capacities. But if you want to train your arms using large hold or gym bar, this results in similar mechanical arm action from the arm's point of view. From the finger muscles point of view, if you perform arm movement or pull-ups with small holds, this generates high finger for finger force intensities and this generates uh, muscle fatigue. So for example, if you want to train your finger capacities, finger force capacities or your muscle fatigue by performing pull-ups on small holes, it's a good idea since they are um, highly involved. And the last point is that if you want to train your arm using large hole or gym bar, it is maybe better to perform um, this training with a large hold because it generates different finger muscle coordination to control the grip and the body movement. And this is a better way, I think, to train your arms uh, in a way similar to uh, the way of um, how we use the arms during our climbing. 
So this study uh, showed that there is a strong interaction between the weak elasticities and the arms and uh, quantified uh, these effects. Uh, quantified this effect. So there are, as I said, uh, there are several applications as an example for designing pull-up trainings and of course this um, study should be further studies should be now conducted during climbing movements to study this interaction during the real climbing movement. Thank you. <laughs>